So in my previous video, I shared all of the major updates added to the October 2024 Adobe Max release for Lightroom Desktop. But as you know, Lightroom Desktop is only one of three services that make up the Lightroom Cloud ecosystem. In this video, I'll share the updates and improvements to the other two services, Lightroom Mobile and Lightroom Web. Now, because I'm an Apple user, I'm going to be showing you the Lightroom Mobile updates on my iPhone 16 Pro Max, but Android users also have gotten some great updates as well. All right, we've got some fun stuff to cover, so let's dive in. All right, so let me start with my usual PSA with these kinds of videos, and you'll want to ensure that you are running the latest version of the app. So you can go into your respective app store, whether it's iOS or Google, and then search for Lightroom, and then just make sure you're running 10.0. The latest version at the time of recording is 10.0.1 on iOS. So just make sure you have that. And then let's go into Lightroom. So the first improvement is more of a quality of life improvement in Lightroom Mobile. If you tap on device on the bottom left here, this is kind of like your camera roll browser. One of the things that you can now do uh, by default is when you tap in an image, you can now swipe to go from image to image, which is like I said, just one of those nice quality of life improvements. It is now kind of working as a user would expect where they swipe left and right to go from one image to the other. All right, now let's move on to kind of like the main new feature in Lightroom Mobile and Web, and that's called Quick Actions. So I'm gonna tap on this image here and you can access Quick Actions with the new button on the very bottom left. It looks like a magic wand. And the best way that I can explain Quick Actions is it will surface edit suggestions that are contextually relevant to the photo. So Lightroom will look at the photo and then it will surface editing recommendations based on what it finds. And so from one photo to another, you can have a one type of editing suggestions. And then in the next photo, you can have something else, but they're all relevant to the photo. It's really fantastic. So for the new user, the new Lightroom user, Quick Actions is a phenomenal way to get amazing results using advanced tools like adaptive masking, but without having to right away understand how that works. Just these one tap controls, it will make a selection for you and apply a treatment. To me, that is wonderful. Anything that can help a new Lightroom user feel more comfortable using the app, I'm a huge fan for. And then again, like I said, for someone like me, who's been using Lightroom since day one, I'm all for efficiency. If I can kind of speed up certain tasks, count me in. So let me show you how it works. So again, you can see I have this photo I took in Tokyo uh, several years ago. I'm going to tap on the quick actions button here, and you saw that Lightroom analyzed the photo. And so you can see that we have several buttons here. We've got auto, which does a great job of just kind of correcting color and tone. If you don't want auto, you can tap on it again, and it'll undo it, but I'm going to keep it here. Now you can see that we have contextually relevant edit suggestions because Lightroom identified a subject. The subject also has a background and Lightroom identified that the subject happens to be a person, so it's surfacing retouch tools. So I'm gonna start by making our subject pop. I'm gonna tap on this, Lightroom will detect and select the subject, and if I apply a preset like pop, you can see how our subject and only the subject pops. You can see there are also these additional sliders here, so you can control exposure, for example, if you wanna make them a little bit brighter, and then boost the saturation. All right, now let's go ahead and let's darken the background. So I want the subject really to pop. And so Lightroom will identify the background and then I can drop the exposure just to make him stand out even more. And then finally, I can tap on retouch here and Lightroom will create these kind of component masks. So I can make his teeth a little bit brighter. I can make his eyes brighter. I can smooth his skin and I can make his clothing pop even more. And now you can see with just a few taps, this is what we got. Here's what we started with. And then here's what we're able to get. Now, of course, the quick actions is just like, a, like I said, it's kind of like a, a very, very easy way to introduce you into getting really powerful results without having to know how some of the more advanced tools works. But as you get more comfortable, you can easily dive into the other editing tools. So, I mean, a simple thing to do is just tap on the edit panel here. Let's go to effects, tap on vignette, and let's just add a vignette just to draw the eye more towards the center of the frame. So that's just an easy thing to do where you can add to it. And of course, if you tap on the masking button here, here are all of the masks that Lightroom created for you automatically. You didn't have to do anything manually. It's just done for you. Now, let me just really quickly go to this image here. And so you can see I'm kind of going through quick actions pretty quickly. If it's something you'd like me to dive a little bit deeper in, 
leave a comment below. Let me know if that's something you want to see. All right, so here, let's say I tap on the quick actions. One of the things I want you to notice is what is not here and what is here. Notice how there is no retouch button because there is no person detected, but Lightroom did detect the sky. So here I can tap on auto just like before. Let's tap on subject. Lightroom will identify the subject, which is balance rock over here. I'll tap on pop. I'll increase that. And I'm also going to increase the saturation as well as the exposure just a bit. Now for background here, same thing. I'm going to decrease the exposure just a bit to bring further emphasis to balance rock. And then now I have sky. So Lightroom will make a sky selection. I can apply a blue drama preset here. Maybe drop that overall strength of that a bit. Increase the exposure a bit. And then also add dehaze, which is a very relevant slider for sky editing. And so you can see here is what we started with. And then with just a few taps, this is what we got with quick actions. All right, so the next improvement to Lightroom Mobile and Web has to do with the ability to apply content credentials to your exported photos. So I'm a big fan of this. I know as generative AI becomes more and more common and powerful, uh, it's okay to be a little bit, you know, skeptical. You want to know whether the image you're looking at has had generative AI applied to it. And so by applying content credentials, you're basically applying kind of like when you buy food and you get that nutritional facts label on the side where it tells you the ingredients and it tells you kind of the nutritional values like the, the carbs and the proteins. Content credentials is the same thing. It will keep track of pretty much what you've done to the photo, the kinds of edits you've applied and whether generative AI was used. So now you can apply that information on export um, using Lightroom Mobile and Web. I'll show you really quickly how it works. I'm a huge fan of this and I really hope more companies adopt this, especially the camera companies and smartphone companies so that as soon as I take the photo, I want content credentials to be applied. So let me show you how that works. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is kind of enable content credentials. To do that, tap on the ellipsis. We'll go to app settings here and you'll see there is an item called content credentials. And here's where you're gonna configure which content credentials will be applied to your photo, including who the producer is, which is me. I can also configure my social media accounts to be associated and you can control which ones you want. So if you didn't want, for example, Twitter, you could turn that off. And then also probably most importantly, the edits and activity. So, I mean, I recommend keeping these on. And then finally, you have the choice of how content credentials will be associated to your photo. If you tap on this dropdown, you'll see you have three options. You can either just apply it to the content credentials cloud, you can embed it in the file, or you can do both, which is what I do. All right, let's tap on the X here. And now if we go to share this image, if I tap on the settings to save the copy to device, you'll see there is a switch here called content credentials. If I tap on this, those content credentials will be embedded in the image and uploaded to the content credentials cloud. And again, you can get to those settings with this button right here. This is where we just were. So it's kind of handy. Now I'm a big fan of content credentials. I'm going to be applying it to all of my photos going forward uh, because I want transparency. I want uh, to be able to at least have an audit trail and see and show whether any of my images that I'm sharing have had generative AI applied, whether it's generative remove, generative expand, generative fill. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm a big fan of that. Now, speaking of generative remove, there is an improvement to how you can use it on mobile. Let me show that to you right now. So I've got this photo here and what I wanna do is I wanna remove those four people on the right. This is where generative remove is perfect. I'll tap on the remove icon here. And here is kind of the, the improvement. You see this detect object switch. Before, what you had to do is you kind of had to make the exact selection that you want to remove. But now you can kind of adjust your brush size. And then here, I'm just going to make kind of like a rough selection. And there, Lightroom is able to identify what it is I want to remove without having to, you know, specifically select it. So I'll tap on the check mark here. And now let me show you again one of the benefits of content credentials. So I'm going to tap on the share button. Again, if I look at the settings here, you'll see content credentials are enabled. And so I'll save that to my camera roll. And again, Lightroom is applying the content credentials to that image. And now if I go over to this website here called contentauthenticity.adobe.com, first thing I recommend doing is joining the waitlist here so you can get access to the content credentials web app that Adobe is working on. But if you kind of scroll down here, you'll see this inspect link, tap on that. And now let's load that image that I just saved to my camera roll. Tap on browse then tap on photo library. And so here's the image. 
I'll tap on done. And when I tap on the image, here is all of this information. And you can see right there in the content summary, this image combines multiple pieces of content. At least one was generated with an AI tool. Here you can see that I'm the producer and links to all of the social media platforms that I gave access to. But then here under process, first you'll see that the image was edited using Lightroom 10.0, which is the latest version of mobile. But then below it, the AI tool used is Adobe Firefly, which is what powers the generative remove tool in Lightroom. So again, full transparency in terms of what was done to the photo, which I'm a big fan of. All right, so those are the main improvements to Lightroom Mobile. Again, the ability to swipe through your photos uh, when viewing them on device, as well as the new quick actions, which is huge. And then we also have the ability to apply content credentials on export and improvements to how you select distractions that you wanna remove using generative remove. Now I wanna switch over to Lightroom Web because I just wanna show you how quick actions works there. It's really fantastic. And I'll also show you how you can apply content credentials on export. All right, so to access the quick actions on Lightroom Web, it's this icon up here on the top right, the magic wand. You'll notice a few things here. First, in Lightroom Web, we have recommended presets, which is fantastic. And these are uh, powered by the Lightroom community and they're available to all Lightroom subscribers. So if you have one of the Lightroom plans or the photography plan or the all apps plan, you have access to these recommended presets. Another tool that we have in Quick Actions in Lightroom Web is the ability to straighten perspective. So if your image is you know, slightly off angle or not truly vertical, this will help with that. We can go ahead and we can click on Auto Light and Color. You'll notice if you don't want it, you can back out by clicking on this X right here. But in this case here, I like what it does. Now, similar to mobile, Lightroom detects the content of the image and it kind of surfaces relevant edits. So here it detected a sky, it detected a subject and also a background. So let's go ahead and let's click on subject over here. And Lightroom is making that selection of the subject. And you can see here the car you can either make it darker or brighter, depending on your taste. I'm gonna go ahead also and apply a blue drama preset to the sky. So Lightroom makes a selection of the sky and then it'll apply a preset here, which adds just a nice little kind of bump to the sky here. It gives it a bit more definition. And then I can also apply a subtle background blur. So if you want to make your subject pop even more off the background, this will help with that using the lens blur tool. So you can control the overall strength of that over here. And then again, you can have fun with the recommended presets over here. You can apply a preset and if you don't like the way it looks, you can click this icon here to reset that. And of course we have all of these different categories here so we can go to something like cinematic, maybe try something like this. And then let's go ahead and let's just drop that strength down. Let's bring it to zero and just slowly build out. So something like that looks really cool. You can see here is the original here is our edited photo. And now if you want to export your photo with content credentials, you can click on the share button here. And then if you go to the download section here and you click on this little gear, you can click here and then here are your content credential settings. So you'll want to turn this on again, similar to mobile and desktop, you can control how those content credentials will be applied to your image and then which content credentials you want to apply. I, I do recommend keeping them all on click on done. And now when you share, you'll see the little content credentials icon next to the different presets. All right. So those are the improvements to Lightroom mobile and web. I'm a huge fan of the quick actions panel. I, I have to say anything that makes it easier for someone who's new to Lightroom uh, to launch the app, have a few taps and get amazing results without having to get intimidated by advanced tools like masking. I'm a big fan of, and also it helps speed up my own workflow when I just wanna get a few quick actions applied to my image. I'm also very happy to see content credentials make its way on all of our surfaces, adding transparency to the edits that you apply to your photo, especially when generative AI tools are used. Now, if this is interesting to you, know that this is just kind of like a small taste of everything that you can do with Lightroom's cloud ecosystem. And if you wanna learn more, I have a very in-depth course called Lightroom Everywhere. It covers everything that you could wanna know about Lightroom desktop, mobile, and web. It's got almost 11 hours of easy paced content. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And I mentioned how my previous video uh, showed what's new in Lightroom desktop. So I've got that here. 
As always, if you found this video helpful, a thumbs up really does help and be sure to click on the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified of all future videos. Thanks a lot, everyone.